You know, fellas, it's time to step away from basketball for just a moment. Earlier this week, the Boston Police Department posted a tweet. The tweet was meant to honor the Celtics' legendary Red Arbach during Black History Month. Now, Arbach, who was white, was the first NBA executive to draft a black player in 1950 and the first to put an all-African-American team on the floor in 1964 and the first to hire a black man, Bill Russell, as his head coach. The tweet was heavily criticized and then deleted. And then the Boston PD apologized. Now, earlier Tuesday at Spurs practice, at Spurs shoot-around, rather, Coach Greg Popovich, who had been compared to Red Arback, was asked about the importance of him celebrating Black History Month, and he didn't hold back. Take a listen. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, the league is uh, made up of uh, a lot of black guys. You know, so to honor that and understand it is pretty simplistic. Uh, how would you ignore that? But more importantly, you know, we live in a racist country that hasn't figured it out yet. And it's always important to bring attention to it, uh, even if it angers some people. You know, the point is that you have to keep it in front of everybody's nose. So they understand it still hadn't been taken care of and we have a lot of work to do. You know, fellas, I don't really know the relationship between the Boston PD and those that were upset. But just my feeling on a man like Red Arbach, uh, when we celebrate Black History Month, I, I do think that it's a part of Black History Month. The fact that it showed how great a team could be with opportunities for black players. And he gave those players the chance, whether it was the players that he drafted, whether it was the players that he put in the coaching. And I just called a friend of mine, Dr. Harry Edwards. I think all you guys know him. And he gave me a couple quotes, and I just want to just say this so I don't, I don't mess it up. But he, he said, uh, it's not black history. It's not white history. It's American history. You can't talk about white history without black history and vice versa. He said, it's like talking about the ocean and not including water. And I, I do think that in order to honor our struggle, we have to honor all of those that helped in the struggle, that contributed to the struggle. And this is a time when it didn't necessarily afford them any great luxuries except for winning, which was a big luxury at that time. But, you know, Zeke, and I'll get to you, the big fella, want to hear what everybody thinks. But, you know, for what Rod Arbach did, their relationship of being humans, he and Bill Russell. Bill Russell couldn't stay at hotels with his team. Bill Russell was treated certain ways and could go to Red Arbach and say, Coach, and, and if I have a son and my son says, Dad, I can't stay in the same hotel with my daughter, I have to say, well, the family not staying there then, son. And so to me, the, the things he did in a time when it wasn't popular, uh, as an athlete, I say thank you to Bill Russell, Kareem, others that came before me, but I definitely say thank you to those uh, that were the forerunners of giving opportunities to those that maybe didn't look like them, Z. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you, we can't tell all story in a silo. I mean, we, we have had help in terms of, you know, success in this society. And a lot of times what happens is uh, we are limited to a certain amount of space to tell our story. But there's a full history of us. And, and I like to, I'll start with Popovich because he made the statement that it's a racist country, right? And in order for this to be a racist country, you have to believe in the social construct of race. Race is not a biological construct. I mean, it's not biological. It's social and cultural. And Greg Popovich and Red Arbeck, as men, did not buy into the construct of race. They looked at all of us as human beings. And when we deal from a human standpoint, not from a racial standpoint, but just from a human standpoint, then we are all equal. There's no black, there's no white. Race is a social construct. It's not biological. W.E.B. E. Du Bois, who's an historian, race is a social construct, right? Michael Omi, Howard Winnett, my teachers at UC Berkeley, who wrote the book Racial Formations in the USA, said race is a social construct. And for those who choose not to opt into the construct of the social norms of America that we live in, right? If you choose not to participate in the construct, then you have the choice to view and treat each other as human beings. And that's what Red and Pop 
are talking about, and that's what they're doing. They're looking at all of us as human <clears throat> beings, not through the lens of race. And you have a choice because, again, it is a construct in America. It's not biological. And, and Baron, it's, it's blessed. we're blessed to be in a sport where it, it is the way that Zeke just explained. I don't care if you got a beard or, or wear a beanie everywhere you go. You would be my man and we yeah. win games together, sure. right? We judge each other off the content, how hard you work, how, you know, uh, what's your character like in the locker room? What's, what's kind of your opinion on Black History Month, Popovich, or any of these subjects? Uh, I would say, you know, for me, uh, I agree with Pop, too, you know, because, you know, I always say that we are a part of the history, we contribute to the history, but we're never written into the story, the overarching story of the history. And so, you know, just Black History Month, for me, Black History Month is every month, right. all year, yeah. you know. Yeah, and day. I think that, um, you know, just in the NBA, it is majority black, right? But when you start to look at this month, right, and you start look at all the events, right, that line up in this month, and the opportunity to tell our stories that never gets told, because this is the most eventful in the fun month where everybody pass out awards and get accolades. Right. So it's always overshadowed by, you know, our, our stories and our messaging are, are always overshadowed by, you know, big events, you know, our mainstream media. And I think that mainstream media needs to do a better job and brands and, you know, our league and, and to tell these stories in our, you know, whatever time frame we have or whatever month we have, we have to be able to recognize ourselves in a part of this whole history, then not just as black people in history. Big dog? Well, I also agree with Popovich. Uh, quick story, the first time I met Bill Russell, he sat down with me for three hours and basically he talked about how Red Arbach had his back. They pull up in nice luxury hotels and they say, hey, uh, black players can't stay here and Red will get the whole team and say, well, well Bill can't stay here, nobody's staying here. So he definitely is part of, 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 of Black History Month. He, you know, he gave Bill and those guys the opportunity, he gave Bill the opportunity to coach. So, you know, he started something and, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of African-American coaches that have come and gone. And, you know, I live by a, a preschool and it's, it's the prettiest thing because I drive by every morning by 8 o'clock and you see black kids, white kids, Chinese kids running around holding hands. So it basically means to me that racism is taught. So like me, when I'm, I'm, I'm out talking, I just try to get with the kids because these, these, these older people, you know, people that are stuck in their ways, you're not really going to change their mind. You know, we, we can do all we can. You know, we can speak on, on, on social issues, but... Popovich made a great point. We, we are in a racially divided country. It is what it is. Uh, I just try to get to the kids because it's a beautiful picture. You, you know, you see Chinese playing with Russians, Jewish playing with Muslims. It's just, you know, a beautiful thing to watch. And I also agree with Barron. Every, every, every month is Black History Month. You know, this is about American history, not black or white history. But I don't just celebrate Black History Month in February. I do it all the time, every time. And you know what? You know, I, I think we also need to put Red Arbeck in, in context in terms of what he and Bill Russell did during that period of time in the 60s, okay? So JFK was assassinated in 1963, Malcolm X in 1965. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. In 1966, Red Arbeck stood up and said, Bill Russell will be the player coach of the Boston Celtics in 1966. Okay. And I don't care who like it. Um, um, again, 68 Kennedys assassinated, 69 Fred Hamptons assassinated, and in 1974, that's when we started integrating public schools in the United States, and particularly in Boston. Think about that. So Red Arback and Bill Russell are tied at the hip together in history. So you can't honor Bill Russell without honoring Red Arback for what he stood for in the 60s in this country. And that's why sports, that's why society follows sport. Sport doesn't follow society because in sport, we do look at each other as equals and as human beings except for when they're talking about hiring people in management. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. The Rooney Rules still don't yeah, come yeah, through yeah. yet. I mean, but, he's got to go. But on, but on the playing field, it's about who we as human beings who can help us win, right? And that's what Red Arback and Bill Russell stood for. Now, when they walked outside of the arena, 
then they had to make the choice, do they accept the construct, again, of race? And if you accept the construct of race, then on top of that, you are allowed to have racism when you accept the construct of race. But if we all are human beings, then we can't have racism or racist. You know, when we look at uh, the climate of sports then, the Boston Red Sox was the last baseball team to integrate. And it's, you know, juxtaposed to Red Arbach doing what he did in the turbulent 60s. And I get a lot of chance to talk to Coach Popovich. And every time I go talk to him before a game, you go in there with a scrum, and I'm like with there with Marv, Kevin Harlan, someone, and we never talk about the game. He's given me books before. Yeah. He gave me the fire next time. Did you read this? Did you do this by Baldwin? And so uh, Popovich to me is, is, a, is a man of character. He's a military man. He understands uh, service. And so, you know, for me, I'm proud to be part of the NBA because it seems like out of the big four, we've been um, kind of the one to move forward. We mm -hmm. haven't had a, a Kaepernick situation. We can wear I can't breathe shirts. I remember saying that Trayvon Martin was killed was killed and murdered and, and was treated wrongly. I, I remember being able to say that and not have a problem with the NBA. So I'm like you guys, I celebrate American history, uh, which is our history every month out the year. And I hope that for parents and kids that go home, now we have the internet, now we have tools at our hand. And no, you aren't being taught black American history in schools, but now we can still go out and find that history. It's not like when we grew up and maybe it was buried someplace in the encyclopedia. All you gotta do is go type in some words and you can get it right now and, and, and understand where you've come from and how special you are. Can I just end with this one thing? These four brothers sitting here, we didn't all come from Africa. And there was a united, there was, there was a country before 1492 and our history goes way beyond 1492. So you can't start us at 1492. We were always here. That's history only from us players. No, we love you guys. Happy American History Month. We're back with some more players only. Only players, baby. <laughs>